Hey everyone, we are answering questions with Mike Georgie from the Nexus Group LLC. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, go watch the introduction video. That's who he is, what he does, all that good stuff. We are just going to jump into questions today. And the number one question I get at real estate meetups is our first topic. And that is, hey, I'm new to this. I'm excited. I've got all this boundless energies. When do I need to set up the LLC? So Mike, how do you answer that question? You know, there's a certain set of criteria that I look for uh, before I advise someone to set up an LLC or corporation. The first one is how far out are they from their deal? How far until they are actively going to put in an offer or submit an offer? If they are three months or less from submitting an offer, then if they might want to start thinking about setting up an LLC. Um, the, the reason why I say three months or less is because it's obvious they have a plan they have a goal, most likely they've already been looking at property and you know, three months or less, there's a certain amount of time that you need to have before you can actually get the entities pushed through the state. Some, some states are immediate, some states take three to four weeks. And so if there's any hiccup or what have you, everything will be put in place. It also gives the investor time to go ahead and do the initial minutes and resolutions to put in the capital, to make sure that they've facilitated all the initial um, activities correctly and uh, to you know the compliance standard before they actually go ahead and submit it out as an entity, the, an offer as an entity. The second one uh, item that I look for is, are, is there funding in place or are they looking for someone to land their funding or looking for someone to land their funding? Um, if you don't have funding in place, if you're thinking you may wanna get a partner here or there, you don't personally have the funds or you, the number three is do they have the credit and the means to be able to get the property um, if they're not purchasing it outright, uh, those are the three criteria on really that I follow. Because if they're three months or less out, they have their down payment money, they have the credit, and they know how they want to go about actually financing the property. Four, five, and six, have they looked at properties yet? Are they already thinking about submitting on a specific property? And then finally, have they submitted on a property? If you've already submitted on a property, sometimes you can get it changed over to the entity, but most likely you just need to, to quick claim it afterward. But it's best to go ahead and put that offer out as an entity. Yeah, so there's, uh, you know, again, as we go through these questions, um, we've, I've known for a long time that we're going to disagree or, or have different points of view on stuff, which is frankly why I said yes to this. So uh, first off, uh, I like the 90 day rule, right? Um, you know, I... I get nervous when I see that excitement, right? When I see somebody vibrating in front of me, right? At a meetup, um, frankly, too often, they see setting up an entity as taking action. Uh, I believe most people are doing that just to make themselves feel better and they never do anything after. So for most people, when I see that, I'm like, no, your job is to go learn your market, right? You saw me speak three times. The big thing for me is go learn your freaking market. If you don't know what a good or great deal is in your market, it doesn't matter if you have an entity or not because you haven't done anything. If you're not going to own anything, it doesn't fucking matter, right? So too many of you are setting up an LLC and then six months later, you've done nothing. You've written no offers. You've, in essence, wasted $800 or more, depending on what you're doing out there. Um, so what I would tell someone is, is, yeah, I mean, are you writing offers, right? Are you actively, have you done a pre-approval? Have you done those things? So I want to insert that first because too many, I believe too many people are selling LLCs as this magic thing and people are wasting their money. Uh, so I wanted to get that recorded. A hundred percent. And I was going to follow up with the idea that people are wasting their money. Good. What, I, what I find is that a lot of individuals who want to be real estate investors and who have the intention, but mm -hmm. haven't quite made it yet, they go to a real estate investing seminar where they're telling you you're going to make a certain amount of money and you just follow these yeah. steps and it's going to be great. And then you have these other individuals who are also there that say, you know, and to follow this person's plan, you need to go ahead and yes. set up an LLC. In fact, you need three LLCs, one for every property you think you're going to set up. And then you need a management company. And now you're four entities deep. You have 800, if you're in California, you have an $800 franchise tax. You have to get the tax returns completed, the minutes and resolutions completed, the minute book completed. And you haven't even looked at a property. Exactly. You haven't, like Mike said, you haven't looked at and, and uh, uh, resourced your area and where you're going to be investing. And so make sure it's, you know, it's like getting a degree in college and then going to your dream job. You got to do the research first. You got to get the information first and then move into the active portion of things. Yeah. I want people that, I want people that are, are 
if you're writing offers, you, you should at least call the Nexus group and have conversation. If you are just sitting in a real estate meetup and vibrating with excitement, or you're seeing some future good coming out of this nightmare that we're going through with this, you know, event, this health event, um, stop it. That's just by taking action and setting up something, Hey, my next door neighbor's LLC or whatever you want to call it. That's nothing. Go do your gosh darn homework and figure out what a good or great deal is. That is step one, right? It all starts there. If you're not going to find good or great deals, you're wasting your money. So I wanted to get that on record. The next thing I wanted to talk about kind of in your opening is um, you sort of went through, yeah, if you're doing a partnership or you're JVing or you're getting some kind of hard money, absolutely have the discussions. LLCs is the right thing to do up front. So you kind of, you kind of know how it goes from there, especially if you're borrowing money from a, a, an entity like that. But let's have the honest discussion because we may not agree on this. Let's assume you're a full-time employee, six-figure income, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you're going to go buy an investment home with 30% down and give an FHA mortgage. But you and I both know you can't do that in an LLC today, right? It changes, right? right. 10 years ago, you could, no problem. Today, the current rules are, if I'm going to go get an FHA backed mortgage with the lowest interest rate, which could have a three on it, I, you know, I need crazy. to do that in my own name. So what do you tell someone that's kind of in that situation, uh, just knowing the lending requirements? Because not a lot of people can stroke a check for the full 100%, nor should you because you get no leverage. Exactly. So, you know, when it, when it comes to actually getting approved and, and getting financing, those things, let's be honest, a lot of the time you're going to have to get a personal, uh, you're going to have to put a personal guarantee up, you're going to have to put up your own credit, you're going to have to do all those things. It's only after the second or third year, if then, yeah. and if you've steadily been building the company credit, that you may, may be able to get uh, financed without putting down your personal guarantee. Um, if you have to put up down a personal guarantee, and let's just say that the entity wasn't the purchaser with your personal guarantee using your, your credit, you're going to have to do what's called a quick claim. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you need to watch out for potential reassessment on property tax mm -hmm. and what the value you got at the property for. And so what I say is this, I say, you know, you're going to have to use an LLC. It's going to have your personal credit. It's going to have your personal um, guarantee, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we can write a resolution that allows the company to use your personal credit so that it separates you guys. And so that the corporate veil, does, veil doesn't have an issue if there's any loss or if there's any attack. Mm -hmm. It doesn't protect you from the actual mortgage or the mortgage company if there's a default, mm -hmm. but it will protect you if someone sues the property and by extension the owner, which at that point would be the LLC. Correct. Excellent. So again, folks, there are so many things in this business and we will dive deeper into LLCs and corporate veils and all of that stuff in upcoming discussions. But this is the first one, right? If you're, if you're getting started, you're that, vib that vibrating person that I can still envision in my eyes. Um, you need to realize, A, you need to learn your market, understand what a good or great deal is first. You don't just run out and create an LLC with your, your dog's name, right? Um, do something else first. But if you're going to get into this, whether it's with FHA financing, 30% down or JV or whatever, you need to call the Nexus Group LLC because there's lots of ins and outs, uh, lots of things you can do. Um, and again, you can call me, you can email me, you can text me, you can leave a comment. I'm not answering, uh, because I do not play in the depths of things that I don't know. Uh, I would hate to inadvertently hurt anyone. Um, so again, that's why we're doing this series. That's why we're going to answer one question at a time. Uh, so Mike, any other thoughts on this question before we call this video done? Yes. Um, if you are out there, you haven't put out an offer, you haven't uh, gotten all the money that you need for the down, you haven't figured those things out, but you're, you're basically accruing expenses, mm -hmm. you're accruing mileage on your car, those things. Just make sure that you're, you're um, uh, documenting those items and you're recording them and you're tracking them. Um, those are things that you could write off potentially on your Schedule C before mm -hmm. you do an LLC or a corporation. Yeah. And those are things that you can take benefit yeah. right now. And so if you're doing those things, get a diary, download an app. There's a million apps that'll help you track your mileage, your everything else. So uh, just make sure you're doing those things and uh, good hunting. There you go. All right, Mike, thank you very much. This is going to be fun because um, I'm just going to tell you how it is and we're going to dance. So I like to tell you, uh, I like to hear you answer the one. Thank you very much. Love and it. we are on to the next question.